All right, happy Tech Tip Tuesday. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Today, I wanna to talk about controllers. Talk about Control 4 controllers. What is the difference? Recently, we've been building a bunch of systems with Control 4 on the back end, and people are just unsure about what the difference is. Thought I'd post it here, give you guys a chance to see it also where we are in the country. This gives you a little bit more information as you're looking at putting Control 4 in your home and which controller is the right, right one for you, okay? Let's start with the entry level one. We are gonna start with the CA1. So the CA1 is really intended for builder projects. This one's really intended for people who aren't interested in tying in audio and video. Very great controller, very, very basic. This has some RS-232 for controlling things like alarm systems. It has Zigbee in it for controlling things like lighting. It has network in it for linking to things like smart alarm systems and some other products that are IP enabled like heating and cooling, Nest thermostats, those types of things. Very, very slick, very small, very inexpensive, um, very slick and that comes with a wall bracket. So we can actually wall mount this inside your media panel where your other equipment is. We can mount this in the back wall of your audio and video section. Uh, very, very powerful, great starting point if you're looking for automation in your home, but you're not interested in looking down the audio and video realm. You're just looking at automation, okay? Again, CA1, great product, okay? As we leave that, we then go to the EA series, entertainment and automation, okay? Entry level controller there is going to be our EA1, okay? EA1 is designed for a single room system. So if you have a single room, you're looking at adding automation, maybe then maybe some garage doors, those types of things. But in reality, you're looking at just a single room where you're going to have control of the TV, control of your receiver, control of your Xbox, control of your satellite box, all those types of electronic devices, plus all the smart home functions of your CA1. That's where this one comes in, okay? Great product, really powerful, does some excellent stuff when it comes to just controlling a single room. Also, these, these controllers work great as a slave controller, meaning that you have a bigger controller. We'll talk about the EA5 in a second, but you may have an EA5 running your entire home. This can mount right behind the master TV. It can mount inside a small cabinet, any number of places, and give you individual room control. So it works really good as a controller just for a separate space, okay? EA1. We're then going to move to the EA3. EA3, just big enough to know that it's different than an EA1, but the big difference is on the back plane. So this back area. When you move from an EA1 to an EA3, the big thing you gain is the audio in-out functionality. Okay, So you still get all the same processing, you still get all of those same high performance control for features. You do gain a higher performance processor, that enables us to put audio output on here. So then what we're able to do is we're take the, able to take that audio out, loop it into an amplifier, drive a set of patio speakers with things like Pandora, Amazon Music, Spotify, those types of streaming services. Also the fun part is this gives you the ability to use AirPlay to stream music from your Apple device into your audio system. Like I said, still the same functionality as the CA1, so you're still at the core, you still have that same core functionality where you have lighting control, garage doors, motorized locks, all that just core fundamental stuff already there. Okay? Next EA series controller we're gonna go to is going to be the EA5. The EA5 is your main controller, okay? This is your big daddy. This is the one that you wanna use once you're looking beyond about three or four rooms of audio and video, uh, beyond 20, 30 lighting products. This is where you wanna go, okay? This controller is the one that has it all, okay? It has the main processor in it can, that can run your home. It also has tons and tons of audio and video outputs, okay? So we got digital and analog audio outs to feed into your audio system. And now because we have multiple, we can actually play multiple things in different locations simultaneously off of this one controller. So let's say that you're in your garage, you wanna be able to listen to one Pandora station, your wife is maybe in the kitchen or on the back patio and she wants to be able to hear a different Pandora station, this, de this device can do it all, okay? Has rack ears, goes directly into your rack. Like I said, tons of features, tons of relays, tons of IOs. It's just a really, really powerful controller. We use these in pretty much every project over about 3,500 square feet because it just has all the functionality someone could need. 
Do we use it in smaller homes? Absolutely. If we have a client that's automating all of their lighting, then we'll put in an EA5 just to make sure that that lighting and the shading and those types of things are fast and efficient. Okay? Quick recap. CA1. No audio, no video. Just smart functionality. Garage doors, locks, lighting, basic functionality like that. Okay? Light duty product. Okay? We then go from there to the EA1. EA1, single room controller, slave controller. That's really about it. If you want any music, you want to tie in the rest of your system, then we bump up to your EA3. We gain audio outputs, we gain a relay, a couple other things. Really, really powerful, smaller home controller. As we leave the EA3, we then go to the big daddy, the EA5. EA5 gives us absolutely tons of inputs and outputs. Perfect for distributed audio, perfect for whole home control. Um, gives you everything you need to really have a smart home that will manage things for you. Okay? All right, that's your Tech Tip Tuesday. You guys go off and have a great day.